after you create a mask, you might see a white outline. One easy way to remove it is to go into Filter, Other, and choose Minimum. Select Roundness on the dropdown and drag the radius slider to the right to remove the white outline around your mask. My name is Jesus Ramirez. I've done a lot of masking in my 18-year professional career, especially now with my work creating posters for the Hollywood industry. In this video, I will reveal to you five professional masking tricks you probably don't know. The last one is an advanced group masking technique I'm sure you haven't seen anywhere else. So make sure you stick around to the very end and let me know if it was new to you. First, let's talk about vector masks, which create razor sharp edges. They're perfect for objects with smooth edges, but they can be difficult and time consuming to create. Here's a trick to speed up the process. Activate the object selection tool. From the options bar, enable the object finder. The subjects in the image will now highlight as you hover over them. Click on one to make a selection. Then go into the paths panel and click on this icon while holding Alt. In this box, you can input a number from 0.5 to 10. Lower values give you more anchor points. This is the result with 0.5. In higher values, result in fewer anchor points. This is a result with 10. When you create a vector mask, you want to use the fewest anchor points as possible while maintaining the shape of the object. In this example, a value of 4 will work great. Then from the Layers panel, hold Control and click on the Layer Mask icon to create a vector mask. Now you can use the Curvature Pen tool and all other vector tools to edit the path. When you're done, you'll have an object with smooth, razor-sharp edges. By the way, if you're learning something new, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. When you apply a mask to anything that has hair or fur, the edges won't always look great. In this image, the fur is up against a difficult background and it is out of focus, making it very difficult to select. One of the best kept secrets in the Hollywood industry to masking hair or fur is that we don't mask it, we paint it, either on the mask, on a new layer with pixels, or both. You will need a fur brush for this. Let's create one from scratch to take on this project. On a white background, make black your foreground color, and enable the Curvature Pen tool. From the Options bar, set the Mode to Shape. Then click to add a vector point on top and add another point on the bottom of the canvas. Now go back and click on the first point. Notice the circle icon on the cursor. This indicates that it will close your path. Next, click in the center of the line to add an anchor point and drag out. And do the same on the other side. When you have something that looks like a strand of hair, you can convert it into a brush. Go into Edit and choose Define Brush Preset. Give the brush a name and press OK. This doesn't look much like fur yet. You will need to change the brush settings by clicking on this icon. Use my settings as a starting point, but you probably will need to adjust them to fit your needs. First, increase the spacing. Notice the preview of the brush here. Keep an eye on it as you change the brush settings. Then enable the shape dynamics. Increase the size jitter to make each strand slightly different lengths and add a tiny bit of angle jitter to slightly rotate each strand. Set the control to direction so the fur follows the direction you paint along. Next, enable the scattering and increase both the scatter and count to add more strands. When you're happy with your brush, you can save it. Click on the flyout menu and choose New Brush Preset and give it any name you want. Now go back into your working document and let's get the mask ready. First, we'll need room to work with. We need to contract the mask. Go into Filter, Other, and choose Minimum. Contract the mask so that you have enough room to paint the fur back in. 8 pixels works great in this case. Make sure that white is your foreground color. Zoom in to see the edge. And paint. Remember, you can use the left and right brackets to adjust your brush size and use the left and right arrow keys to rotate the brush. And keep painting along the edge until you're happy with the results. This looks much better than any selection you can make. But remember, the fur is out of focus. Look at it here. You need to match the blur on your mask as well. To do so, go into Filter, Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. Match the blur of the image as best as you can and press OK. Now the edge of the mask looks fantastic. Here's an extra tip for you. In order to remove some of the colors that you might see on the edge of the mask, you can create a new layer, clip it to the layer below by pressing Ctrl-Alt-G, then press the B key to enable the brush tool, 
click on this down pointing arrow and scroll up under general brushes, select the soft round brush, then hold the alt key to temporarily enable the eyedropper tool and select the color of the fur and paint on the edge to remove the extra color on the edges. And with a little bit of work, this is my final result. To mask this pile of snow to make it seem like it's sitting on these wooden panels, you might use a blending mode. If you select screen, black will disappear and you'll keep only the bright pixels. But we run into two problems. Number one is that the pile of snow becomes somewhat transparent and we can see the background, which is not very good. And also this is just the blend, which means that we can't actually apply a layer style to the edges of the snow, only to the edges of the layer. One of the ways to solve these issues is to create a channel base mask. Let me show you how that works. Go into the channels panel and from here, look at each individual channel and see which one has most contrast between the foreground and background. In this case, they're all the same. So select any channel you want and duplicate it. You can duplicate a channel by dragging it into the new channel icon. Then go into image adjustment levels and make the background black by dragging this slider to the right. It's already pretty black, so we don't need to worry about it. We just need to make sure that the snow is completely white. So you can drag the white point to the left, like so. And you can drag this center point slider to fine tune the details further if you need. In this case, this looks pretty good. Press OK when you're done. Then make a selection out of the active pixels. Here's a trick for you. If you hold Alt and the shortcut to the right of the channel you made, you will create a selection out of the white pixels. In this case, holding Alt, Control, and the number six. Then you can go into the RGB and back into the Layers panel and click on the Layer Mask icon to create a mask. Notice now that the snow is not transparent and it looks like it's sitting on those wooden panels. Even better, we can double click to the side of the layer and add a drop shadow to further create the illusion that that snow is in fact over the panels. And of course you can adjust the settings to get better results. Before we continue, I would love to talk to you about the desktop and monitor I currently use, the MSI Aegis RS desktop and the MSI Optics monitor. The Aegis RS is a powerful computer made to last with easy upgradability. It comes with an Intel i9 processor, 10 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 380 video card, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Everything you need to run Photoshop and all your other creative applications, it's all I use in my professional work. The monitor I'm using is the MSI Optics, a 4K monitor designed to produce high quality resolution images with vivid colors and smooth motions. Also, if you're into gaming, the fast response rate will give you fantastic graphics while playing. I highly recommend you check out these devices. The link is in the description. The next masking trick is a bit advanced, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Let me know down below in the comments if it was new to you. First, I'll go over the layers panel so you can see what we have. We have a background image of New York a color lookup adjustment layer, creating a color effect. Then we have a group called design. And inside of that group, we have a sticker, which has been masked out already. And it has a layer style creating an outer shadow. Then we have a text layer with the words, I love New York. And the goal is to create a mask based on the text layer so that we can see the background through the sticker layer. One way of doing it will be to hold control and clicking on the layer thumbnail to load the layer as a selection. And then on the layer mask, we can fill with black. Black is currently our background color, so I can press control and backspace to fill with black and hide those pixels. Once I disable that text layer, we can see the hole that that layer mask creates. The downside is that this is not editable. For example, if the sticker now needs to say, I love San Francisco, I cannot edit this. I will need to recreate the entire mask from scratch. So let me show you a way in which you can keep the text editable and create a mask at the same time. I'm going to undo that. And the way that you would do so is by using this really interesting feature. You can double click to the side of the text layer to bring up the layer style window. From the knockout dropdown, select the shallow option. Then bring the fill opacity to zero. This will give you exactly the same result as creating a layer mask on the sticker layer. Now I'll explain what's going on here. This text layer is now acting as a layer mask, but it remains a text layer. That means that I can enable the type tool 
and edit the text. So now I can change it to I love San Francisco and the mask remains. And this is all possible because of the knockout feature. Watch what happens when I change the knockout from shallow to deep. Now we get the original color of the layer back. Why is this happening? The deep option makes it so the hole is punched all the way down to the background layer, including making a hole on the color lookup adjustment layer. If you try this and you see transparent pixels, that's because you don't have a background layer. Watch what happens when I click on this icon. I now have transparent pixels. Now this text layer is punching a hole through everything. If you want the deep option to stop at the bottommost layer, make sure that your bottommost layer is a background layer. If you don't have one, you can go into Layer, New, and select Background from Layer. I'll double click on the side of the text layer to bring up the layer style window, and I'll change the option from deep to shallow. Now, the knockout or the hole it creates will only affect the contents of the group. Watch what happens when I bring up the color adjustment layer into the group. One way of moving layers is by using a keyboard shortcut, so I'll press Control and the right bracket key to move the layer up. Now that the layer is inside of the group, Notice that Photoshop will cut a hole on that color lookup adjustment layer, revealing the original color. I'll press Control and the left bracket key to move the layer down and out of the group. And now I'm going to show you another way in which you can use the knockout method that I'm pretty sure you haven't seen anywhere else. I'm going to go inside of this design group and I'm going to create a group and I'll call this group Knockout Mask. Then I'll double click to the side of the group to bring up the layer style window and from here, I can change the knockout to shallow so that this group only affects its parent group. Then I'll change the fill opacity to zero and I'll press OK. So now anything that I place inside of this group will affect the text layer and the sticker layer. And let me show you why that's beneficial. I'm going to create a layer and in this empty layer, I'm going to Enable the brush tool and I'll select this brush so that I can create a torn edge effect. I'll make the brush a little bit larger and I'm just going to paint and I'm painting with black. The color really doesn't matter. I could also paint with white and you'll see that it gets the same result because all that matters are the pixels that are on this layer acting as a mask, the knockout pixels. So that means that I can use a brush to create the knockout effect. I could have just as easily created that effect on this layer mask, but I'm going to show you why this method is more beneficial. Another thing you can do is bring in a layer and use Blend If to create even more interesting masks. I have an image here with cracks. There it is. And I'm going to drag it into the design folder. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this larger so that it covers the entire sticker. Then I'll drag it into the knockout mask group, but it will disappear. And the reason that it disappears is because the sticker is now covered by all the pixels in this layer. I'll drag it out so that you can see what we're going to do visually, and then I'll do it inside of the group. So what I want is I want the cracks to appear on this sticker. How can I do that? Well, I can double click to the side of the layer and bring up the blend if options. The blend if options allow you to hide and show pixels based on their brightness. Notice that the cracks are black and the wall is white. So I can hide the white wall by clicking and dragging this slider to the left. See how the cracks remain, but the wall disappears. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do that inside of the group. So I'm going to click and drag this inside of the group. Everything will disappear, of course. But when I double click to the side of the layer under the this layer slider, I'll do the same thing. I'll select the white point and drag it to the left. Notice as the wall disappears and the crack remains, the transparency is only created where the cracks are, and that's exactly what I want. Also, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to split these points in half and create a smoother transition. So now, I have these cracks as part of my mask. Now I can come in here, and I have some splatters here that I will use. I'll select that, and I will create a new layer, and I can now paint splatters over the image, creating more holes. And why is this beneficial? Well, all the three layers creating this mask are separate. So if I take this to my client, boss, art director, and they're unhappy with the results, they might say 
this might look better without the splatter. So you can easily disable the splatters and still keep the remainder of the mask. Or they might say, we don't like the torn edges, so you can easily get rid of those. Or they might say, we do like the cracks, but there's some noise here. Can you fix that? We can easily do that by going back into the blend if options and making those adjustments like so. Or we can remove that entirely, something that we wouldn't be able to do with a mask. Again, everything is editable. You can bring everything back or you can hide it. If all this were part of the mask, we wouldn't be able to do that. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to press Control E to merge everything into a single layer. Then I'll hold Control, click on the layer mask icon to load it as a selection. And on this mask, on the sticker mask, I'll fill with black. And this will visually give us the same result. But if you change your mind and want to remove the splatters, you can't do that because it's all in one single layer mask. So the advantage of using the knockout on a group and using that as a mask is that you get to keep each element editable and you can adjust it any way you want. And on top of that, the text remains editable so you can always type something else.